Welcome to the Welling Technocrat YouTube channel. In the previous two separate videos, we had learned in detail what is preheat and what is preheat maintenance. In another video, we had studied how preheat is selected for three types of combinations, namely thickness, P numbers, and base metal with different strength. Today we are going to learn what are the five factors affecting the selection of preheat. Factor 1 is the base metal chemistry. The chemical composition mainly the carbon content and the alloy content affects the selection of preheat. If the carbon equivalent is more than 0.3%, preheat selection is critical. The percentage of mainly carbon and then manganese, silicon, chromium, molybdenum, vanadium, nickel and copper is decisive. If the chromium percentage is above 6%, preheat selection is to be done carefully. High chromium stainless steel, martin stick steel, low alloy steel, high strength low alloy steel requires preheat. They belong to P numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10 and 11. The resultant microstructure that is formed with this chemistry is susceptible to cracking. Factor 2 is thickness. Consider two joints of same material with different thickness. During welding of lower thickness, there is slower heat dissipation and therefore slower cooling rate is observed. During welding of higher thickness, there is higher heat dissipation and therefore faster cooling rate is seen. As a result, Higher preheating is required for higher thickness. Factor 3 is the level of restraint. This means the degree of freedom of the joining parts. There are three levels of restraint. Low restraint, medium restraint and high restraint. In low restraint joints like fillet and grooves, there is reasonable freedom of movement of the joining parts. In medium restraint, there is reduced freedom of movement of the joining parts. Because these parts are being attached to the structural works, for example, external joints and internal joints. In high restraint, there is no freedom of movement of the parts that are joined. High thickness welds and repair welds and weld with root pass which has higher stress concentration are examples of high restraint. The fourth factor is heat from the arc. We can see that the heat from the arc depends upon the welding process that has been implemented. The minimum energy for the same fillet weld for a different welding process is given in the table below. You can see that for the same fillet weld, the highest energy is required in SMW and the lowest is required in SW process. You can see that the higher heat of the arc results into slower cooling rate and lower heat of the arc results in faster cooling rate. So the process with lower heat of the arc requires higher preheating. Factor 5 is diffusible hydrogen content of the well metal. The diffusible hydrogen content of the well metal depends on the two parameters, first base metal composition and second restraint. The hydrogen control method is based on assumption that cracking will not occur 
If the average quantity of the hydrogen remaining in the joint after it has cooled down to about 50 degrees Celsius does not exceed a critical value. The table shows the diffusible hydrogen designator. Susceptibility index grouping is the function of hydrogen level H. For example, H4 indicates that the average diffusible hydrogen content shall be maximum 4 ml per 100 grams of deposited metal. So we conclude that there are five factors which are affecting the preheat selection. First is base metal chemistry, second is thickness, third is level of restraint, four is heat from the arc and fifth is the diffusible hydrogen of that metal. In the upcoming video, we shall study about the purpose of preheating. Happy welding! Thank you for watching. Kindly like the video and subscribe the YouTube channel. Push the bell notification for new welding related videos. Share the video with welders, welding foremen, welding engineers and welding enthusiasts. Thank you again.